All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us on our uh, tax season webinar today here on YouTube. I'm very excited. We have a couple of presenters here today to help us um, get a better understanding of uh, what complications might come up in our uh, tax season this year. Uh, and I'm gonna just start off by giving a little bit of an overview of our one degree uh, program and how to find some tax services on our uh, platform and then I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Uh, so to start, my name is Sean Snavely and I am the Community Navigator for San Francisco Bay Area uh, for One Degree. And um, One Degree, uh, we actually also have a chat uh, that is available. So we have the live chat uh, for YouTube disabled um, because we want to protect folks' uh, identity as well as protect folks from any negative comments uh, or uh, folks that are not interested in the uh, positivity of today's webinar. So you can uh, join our Padlet chat here and put any questions in there you might have. Uh, you just have to go to padlet.com backslash one degree backslash chat and those can be questions for us here at one degree or for either of our presenters uh, so please feel free to uh, put your uh, comments your questions on that chat as we're going through the presentation and uh, one of us will make sure to answer them uh, so one degree is a searchable database of community resources in San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles. We are also now in Gainesville, Florida, uh, New York City and uh, Southwest New Mexico. Uh, so we are slowly expanding and hope to continue to expand. So very exciting. Uh, here at One Degree, our mission is to empower individuals to create a path out of poverty for themselves and for their communities. And with that means that we put people at the heart of everything we do. We want to make sure everything on our webpage is accessible to our community. And we want to make sure that we're putting information out there that is useful for all of you to be able to access the services you need, which is why we're here today uh, for our tax season webinar, uh, because we want to make sure that you have the most updated information about how to uh, complete your taxes this season. Uh, with that, we're also private and secure. So we are a HIPAA compliant website. Anything that you put on One Degree uh, in terms of your personal information, it is protected and safe. Um, if you're using any of our assessments or um, any of our application tools, all of your information that you enter is safe uh, and it's only seen by One Degree staff. Uh, so just gonna do a quick uh, go through of how to find tax prep services on the One Degree platform. And today I'm gonna be showing that through uh, our mobile browser. So you can access One Degree uh, on your desktop. You can access it on a mobile browser. You can also use our uh, mobile apps for um, iOS or for Android. Those are both available. Um, this is uh, what the mobile browser looks like. So you're going to go to our website, which is www.onedegree.org. Uh, and you'll come to this lovely opening screen here with our little category icons. Once you've reached that screen, you want to click on that money icon uh, to take you to tax prep services. It's going to ask you to select a category here and you want to select financial services. Once you've selected financial services, you want to select tax preparation. Uh, and then once you've selected tax preparation, that's going to populate a list of opportunities. I want to mention that we uh, prioritize our searches by opportunities instead of organizations as a way to make sure that you get to services as quickly as possible. Uh, so you'll see that all the opportunities are listed first and underneath the description of the opportunity is the name of the organization. You can also filter all of these opportunities that are listed here. Uh, by uh, using our filters. Uh, so you can select uh, that they're open during COVID-19. Uh, you can select the particular language that you might need. You can select a particular county you might want to uh, make sure that provides services to, uh, all to narrow down your search results. So with that, I am uh, gonna stop 
speaking. Uh, and I'm going to introduce our wonderful uh, presenters for the day. I want to start by um, introducing you to my wonderful co-worker, Cecilia, who is going to be helping me with answering questions in the uh, chat today. Uh, and Cecilia, do you want to give a short introduction? Hi, oh, yes. Thank you so much, Sean. My name is Cecilia Mejia. I am the Los Angeles Community Navigator counterpart to the Bay Area. Um, our role is to be able to help community members find and access resources. And we're just so excited to have our two wonderful presenters here today um, to share about tax um, resources for this season. I'll pass it back to Sean. Thanks, Cecilia. So like Cecilia said, we have two wonderful presenters here. Uh, our first presenter is Sophia Salase. Uh, and uh, Sophia is a passionate anti-poverty advocate and has over 15 years of experience supporting families reach financial stability. Sophia joined the United Way Bay Area team last year as a program specialist with the Earn It, Keep It, Save It program, which she's going to tell you more about. Uh, Earn It, Keep It, Save It works to provide free high quality tax preparation services to families with low and moderate incomes throughout the entire Bay Area. In addition, she supports the Cal Savers program, promoting California's state-sponsored retirement plan and the new state law requiring employers with five or more employees to offer a retirement plan and offering a low-cost retirement plan for individuals. Sophia strongly believes that increasing access to policies like working family tax credits and retirement savings is paramount in advancing economic justice and improving the well-being of low-income families. Uh, we are so grateful that Sophia is here with us. Uh, our second presenter will be uh, Janae Craig, who is uh, from Opportunity Junction. Uh, she is the Executive Assistant and VITA Co-Site Coordinator, which we'll explain what VITA is shortly, uh, at least Sophia will. Uh, uh, she's the site co-site coordinator with Opportunity Junction, and she possesses over five years of professional tax preparation and management experience at Block Advisors in San Francisco with specializations in self-employment income and cryptocurrency there to help the taxpayer every step of the way. Uh, I know you, we can't hear you, but give it all uh, a wonderful applause to our, our presenters that are here today. We're so excited. And I'm going to turn it over to Sophia and I'll allow her to tell you more about taxes. Yes. Hello, everyone. Just going to go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> all right. That's working great. So um, again, my name is Sophia Salasa. Thank you so much for that introduction. And I'm going to talk to you about the volunteer income tax assistance program that uh, we put on at the Earn It, Save It, Earn It, Keep It, Save It Coalition in the United Way Bay Area. So um, we're going to go over um, free tax preparation, how to find a site, um, as well as tax credits. So just a little bit of an overview about what VITA is. So VITA is a partnership, a nationwide partnership with the IRS to provide free tax prep services to low to middle um, income folks, it's families and individuals. And we have sites um, all over the community in all eight counties of the Bay Area. So from Santa Clara to um, Santa Clara, San Francisco, Alameda, Contra Costa, right, all the way up to Napa, Marin, Solano, San Mateo as well. Um, that is our Earn It, Keep It, Save It Coalition. I know some folks are in Southern California and they also provide a program down, down there, um, Free Tax Prep LA, that's the name of it, and they also have sites. Uh, we do provide tax services um, that we are trained for. So um, there's many different kinds of uh, tax returns. We, I mean, we do 1099s, W-2s, um, all sorts of different kinds of things, but uh, we won't do like the more complicated taxes, but most low to mid-income folks that we serve are in scope. Also, um, we definitely help people who are in the gig economy um, and clients who follow, file with an I-10 number. An I-10 number is an individual tax identification number. And that is for folks who can't get a social security card and tends to be undocumented people. 
Now, um, the next thing I wanted to go over just really quickly, um, I know that some folks here have just started working. Some people have been working for a long time now, but um, so you know this, but I just wanted to quickly, for those who are new to working, right? Just go over a paycheck stub, your average paycheck stub. Um, and I wanted to focus on this section, the deduction section where you see all these taxes, federal with WH, that stands for withheld, FICA, Medicare, California state withheld, and that's California state disability. This you don't have to worry about the 401k, um, that's different. But these taxes, now depending on how much you make, you will get all or a portion back of your federal withheld and your California state withheld. These other taxes for Medicare, um, Social Security, and disability, those taxes are taken out of your check so that, you know, if you need to use these services, they take them out of your check every month. So you essentially have paid for your unemployment um, and other government services you use. Don't let them tell you different, okay? Um, and then so you get these paychecks every two weeks, every week, whatnot. And then at the end of the year, every, if most, if you work at a, um, kind of like a regular job where you get a paycheck, you'll get a W-2. They are required to send you a W-2. So if you did not get one um, and you're not an independent contractor, you're supposed to get one. So please um, you know, go ahead and do that. And it just tells you how much you made uh, right here, wages, how much they took out in federal tax withheld, um, and uh, how much they took out in states as, um, and down here. Um, so that's how you kind of read a W-2, right? Um, and so really, when we file taxes, um, it is important. Sometimes folks have to pay, pay out, but most low-income folks um, generally don't pay out. I mean, it depends. There's different reasons, but there's all sorts of tax credits. So with this, with getting your federal withheld back and your state withheld back, that's going to give you a certain amount of refund then you have additional tax credits on top of that. And I wanna to talk to you about those because um, it's really important to file your taxes, even if you don't think you, you know, you don't, even if you don't make enough money that you're required to, um, that those are the people who generally are gonna get some of the biggest refunds. So we do want people um, to file and that's what we're here for is to be able to help you file for her. Now, um, some tax credits I wanna talk about. Um, we have the federal earned income tax credit. Now, um, that is for individuals and families. Um, generally, a lot of families are the ones who get the bigger credits, and that can be up to 6,600 for the federal earned income tax credit. Um, and with the state of California, we have our own um, local tax credit. So we have our Cal EITC, so the California Earned Income Tax Credit. Um, that's available to people who make $30,000 a year or less. And also um, our Young Child Tax Credit. And now the Young Child Tax Credit, if you have a child five or under, and you qualify for the California Earned Income Tax Credit, you get another $1,000 on top of that. Um, and the California Earned Income Tax Credit at the highest can be up to $3,000. So, you know, when you're just adding all of these tax um, credits together, now, mind you, people don't really get that highest amount. You know, it has to be a certain, but it is still possible to get up to over $10,000, right, in tax credits. So really want to make sure people know about them because one in five people who do qualify for them don't claim them. Um, there's also all sorts of other tax credits um, that, like, for example, if you have childcare, you can be able to um, get a tax credit for that if you're paying for childcare for a child under 13. Um, so, and that's something that um, you could learn more about at one of our sites. Um, also, right, so I talked about the earned income tax credit. Now, um, some people, right, uh, we know in 2020, because of the pandemic, a lot of people worked a lot less. They either took off because um, they had to take care of kids or their hours got cut out, or they just were on unemployment, um, you know, all sorts of reasons. So just taking into account that, um, so you can actually, like, let's just say, if you made sometimes when you make, um, 
when you don't make that much money, then you're not going to get that much back, right? Um, and sometimes it's kind of complicated. Um, and then sometimes when uh, you do make too much money, you're going to get less back. So um, it's kind of, but our sites can help you out, which is better to use your 2020 income to get a bigger refund. Or if you just um, didn't have that much earned income. So earned income is basically through a job. It could be like a W-2 job, like a regular paycheck job, but it could also be, you know, your own like independent contractor, gig work, that sort of thing. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is important to know about because we want you to get the biggest tax credit possible. And then here, this is for the tax year um, 2013. So single head of household means that, um, right? Like if you are a single parent or you're just taking care of dependents um, and you have, $50,000 income um, with three children, you're still qualified for this. Not the largest amount, but um, still qualify. And then for married couple, it goes higher up to the 56,000 mark, right? So that's important to note. And um, all right, now I wanna talk about stimulus payments. Uh, the technical term is actually the economic impact payment, but more commonly known as stimulus payments. It's important to note that this is not taxable. So it's not going to increase your um, income. You're not going to have to pay taxes on it or anything like that. Um, also, let's just, I know a lot of people either didn't get there, didn't get a certain um didn't get all of their stimulus, didn't get a stimulus for a dependent, a child or a dependent that they had. And so you can actually, um, in your taxes this year, be able to claim that. So it's called a recovery rebate credit. So essentially, if you didn't get it, if you didn't get your stimulus payment, you can get it this time. Um, you can get it this like this round in your tax return. So again, that's important to know because um, we wanna make sure that you get everything you're up. All right, I don't know if you can see this, it's a little stretched out, but um, when, you, when you get unemployment, um, I know a lot of people were unemployed this year and applied for unemployment benefits. Unfortunately, unemployment benefits are taxable, okay? So you would have had a choice when you were um, certifying for your unemployment either to take out some money every check. So as you can see here, right? Um, they had $2,400 in unemployment and then the federal tax withheld was 240. So if you did that, then you don't have to pay taxes on it. So you're all good. However, if you didn't, unemployment is taxable. Um, so you're going to need this form to be able to, uh, well, you're going to need the form period. But um, so, yes, yeah, so if you did receive unemployment, you should be getting a form like this. Um, and it's necessary for you when you file your taxes. Also, something to keep in mind, um, unfortunately, right, unemployment is not earned income. So if you ever wanted to get like, if you were going for the earned income tax credit, it doesn't count, but it does count as income. So if um, meaning that you, it might reduce <laughs> how much you qualify for um, because it's counted as income, making your income higher, but it's not counted as earned income. I'm not sure if that is exactly clear. Um, so that's something to take note when you're thinking about, do I want to use my 2019 or 2020? And again, if you go to one of our tax preparers, we can, uh, one of our sites, which I'll talk about in a minute, you can get help with that. Okay. I uh, also want to talk about education credits. Now, if you guys are um, going to school, um, you have you have a, a, a you have a, a ability just um, depending on your situation or what kind of scholarship it varies. But I just want to let you know that there is something called the American Opportunity Credit, 
which is a maximum annual credit that you can um, use for basically education expenses. So if you bought books, you paid for tuition, um, you know, certain materials that were required for class, you're able to um, uh, you're able to claim $2,500 of that. Now, you don't get $2,500 back, but that's the maximum you're allowed to claim. Um, but that will help. There's also a lifelong learning credit. Um, so with the American Opportunity Credit, that's just available for your first four years. So if you claim that credit four times, um, you can only claim it four times, essentially, or for your first four years. Um, but there's also uh, another credit called the Lifelong Learning Credit, and you can use that um, at any eligible institution. So like if you were taking, you know, maybe like a photography class because that was something related to your work, um, you would be able to, uh, that would be worth up to, up to $2,000 per tax return, you're able to claim that. Um, so that's something to note you, from your universities or your community colleges, um, you should be getting tax documents just saying like, uh, you know, how much was paid, uh, et cetera. So if you did not, please contact them. Usually if you have like an online, well, and there's an online portal for your school, you can find that information there. If you can't, um, then contact your schools. Okay, so now I wanna talk about our free tax prep sites. Um, so this year, right, it's a little bit different. Um, so we do have limited in-person sites where you would sit down one-on-one -on -one, um, with someone in the uh, with someone a tax preparer and get your taxes done. We have some of those sites. Um, those appointments are really reserved for seniors, um, people who really can't use any other option. Um, we also have our in-person drop-off tax prep. Now here you would go, um, you would have to have certain documents I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and they would check off your documents, like your social, your ID, there's an intake form um, that you would fill out, but it would be limited contact. And then we would prepare, the tax preparer would prepare taxes and review your taxes, not in person over the phone. Um, you would come back in person, review them and sign them and we would file them for you. So that's one option, a lot, a good amount, a lot of sites are operating like that. And then we also have our remote drop-off, remote tax prep, AKA completely online tax prep. Now this is the um, model that we're really <laughs> recommending for folks. A lot of our sites have um, filled up, but we have a great online option, which I'll talk about, um, our getyourrefund.org option. And so the platform is easy to use. Uh, you would just upload your documents. There's a live chat feature if you can't figure out um, how to use it. And you would be able to do uh, your taxes completely online. You would sign in the platform. And uh, so really trying to recommend this. Also, um, Janae is gonna talk about um, her DIY uh, tax prep classes, which are great, uh, tax prep, but we also have DIY um, do-it-yourself tax assistance, and that is where you would be um, help, you would do your own taxes, but with the help of a, a help of a volunteer just in a Zoom breakout room, you know, there just to be able to help. Um, and now I want to just show you our website. How you can find a tax site um, in just a little bit. So stop sharing and then I'll reshare. Okay. okay. So our our website is uh, let's go. Okay. Yes. Our website is United Way Bay Area dot org backslash tax dash help. Now here you see on our, um, I'm assuming everybody can see, right? Um, uh, on, on our website, um, right here, you have an option to find your tax site. So when you click here, it takes you to the map. And um, 
let's see. We have, I see our DIY taxes aren't posted on our website, the link, but it will be. And here we have a map, it is searchable. Um, like I said, uh, we normally have a lot more sites. So there's, this is usually lit up a little bit more. Um, but I know folks are all over. Um, unfortunately, let's see, oops, sorry, this is not as, um, you can search the map by like zooming in, but you can also search by category. So let's just say um, we have all sorts of different categories, but let's just say you wanted to apply for an I-10, an individual tax identification number. We have a few sites that are able to do that. When it pops up, um, you can search by days available, by hours available, languages, you have your site type. So let's just say you do want to um, do your virtual, virtual tax preparation. So these are the sites offering virtual tax preparation. Some sites are using our Get Your Refund platform I talked about earlier. Some sites have their own system, but it's pretty similar. And you can um, scroll up, map a scroll down. Yeah. So these are our sites. Um, let's see. You can also search by languages. We do have all sorts of different languages. Let's go with Chinese. Um, right. We have um, sites, and also our Get Your Refund site can help in Chinese and Spanish. Um, we do have Spanish speaking sites, etc. So that's that's pretty much our website. I mean, there's you can also if you want they're listed. If, you, if the map is not is confusing, um, they're listed just just as um, just in a list. So I'm going to stop sharing. I have one more thing I'd like to cover on the, should have probably switched that up, but that's all right. Um, and then, so when you do come into our sites, what you will need, can you see the screen now? The what you will need screen? Great. So what you will need, you're going to need a photo ID um, if for every person on a tax return, and that means, uh, Use every adult on the tax return. Um, if you have children, you're gonna need uh, to bring their social security card for, again, every person on the tax return, so for your children and for yourself. Um, if you, um, you wanna bring whatever has got sent to you. So W-2s, 1099s, um, any of, uh, if you want for your college, a 1099-T, just any tax statements, right? Uh, also your healthcare, uh, you should get a, a statement of, about healthcare information. Last year, they got rid of the um, penalty. So you, if you didn't have insurance, you wouldn't have to pay. But this year, the state of California um, brought it back. So really want you to bring your healthcare info um, child care, if you have child care, um, bring that information and also bank account information if you have it. Now, normally, um, I would say if, you know, you weren't getting, uh, we want you to bring your bank account so your tax refund can be direct deposited. I know in the past, last tax season, we had told folks that if you were going to wait for a check to be mailed, you know, that would be around six weeks. Um, a direct deposit, you know, would be much shorter than that. However, it was not six weeks to get people's paper checks. Things are very, very behind. And they did not get things their checks for many, many months. So I would really recommend if you don't have a bank account, I mean, if you do have a bank account to bring that information. Um, also, we it is earn it, keep it, save it. So um, there's that save it part. And so if you save part of your refund, you can be entered into a raffle. Um, 10 site, 10 people get picked to win $100, and then one person has a $1,000 prize. So that's also important. And you don't, it can be any amount saved. It could be just like a $5. I mean, it could technically just be $1, but uh, <laughs> you know, a few dollars is great. So we just wanna get folks in the habit of saving. 
so that's um, all I have for now. If folks, um, I'm not sure if I'll just pass it back to you, Sean. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Sophia. Um, uh, thank you again for joining us. And uh, if you do have any questions, just want to remind you that you can uh, post them on our Padlet chat. It's padlet.com backslash one degree backslash chat. Um, both Cecilia and I are there answering questions if you have any. Um, and we're happy to um, pose questions to our presenters. Uh, again, thank you uh, so much, Sophia. That was very informative. And uh, we're going to I have Janae, if uh, Sophia, if you'll stop sharing your screen. Oh, do you have a contact us page, Cecilia? Uh, not Cecilia, Sophia, I'm so sorry. I'm having oh, a third okay. thing. <laughs> Sophia, do you have a contact page in your presentation where folks can get a hold of? Um... Do I? Uh, it's usually I have it on the beginning. I'm not sure if I put my email in it though. No, I did not, but I can, um, I, I can just go ahead and add that email and send you the slides if you would like. Awesome. We will uh, make sure that that goes into the follow-up email that folks get. We do have a question uh, on the pallet chat. What is the maximum income someone can have to take advantage of free tax support? I believe this is different for both presenters. So Sophia, you want to answer first and then Janae? Sure. Yes. That's a very good question. So really um, there's sort of a general number that it is sort of 56,000. However, that is not a real number because that's the number that the federal um, government sets for this program. And we want to serve low to middle income people. But 56,000 is what they decided was middle income for um, you know, the whole country. But we can serve people. Uh, it depends on the site. Uh, we do prioritize the most low income folks. But um, we certainly serve people who make well over that if we're talking about you know a family with multiple children and we also understand that people have medical debt or student loan debt all sorts of things so i want to say it's by a case by case basis but if you make you know more than that significantly more than that um just go ahead and call a site um, and if they're not able to help you because of your income amount um, another site might be able to so try another one but Sites generally are open. Awesome, thank you. Janae, uh, do you wanna respond to that question as well? Um, yes, so for our free DIY TA site, we are offering free via tax layer online, which has no income limitation for their platform. So you can gross up to 100K, you can have Schedule C, self-employment income and so forth, and still be able to file your individual tax return for the year. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, again, just to let folks know. Um, uh, yes. Okay. Actually, before Janae, one more question before we go uh, to your presentation. We have someone who uh, asks, they're on SSDI. Can you talk about that, please? Is it taxable where their tax is taken out, etc.? cetera? Uh, Sophia, you want to respond? Or Janae, SSDI right. state disability is not taxable income. Awesome. Um, and okay, also I was only on it for half of 2020. Okay, so it, it's not state, um, social security is not taxable income. Uh, so you are good to go, our anonymous friend from Padlet. Um, and Janae, we'll turn it over to you now and uh, please share your wisdom with us. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, Ashan. Thank you so much for inviting us here today to present our different programs here at Opportunity Junction on the road to self-sufficiency. So we do here at Opportunity Junction believe that everyone who is willing to work deserves the opportunity to succeed. And so our programs that we offer are computer basics at night, English as a second language, our ACT program, which is an administrative careers training program. It is a full-time program that is offered for three months, um, giving you certifications in MOS, such as Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and et cetera. We also offer individualized career development with our WIOA program, Roadmap with youth 18 to 24, and also our CNA program in conjunction with Mount Diablo Adult Ed. Um, for more information, please 
feel free to reach out to myself um, or our site and we have our inquiry page. Okay. So a little bit about our do-it-yourself tax site. It is a do-it-yourself. So we are offering it via virtual this year due to the pandemic. Um, we definitely wanna be as safe as possible. So we are offering it via Zoom platform and we have breakout rooms scheduled using our tax layer site. Uh, you would sign up on our website. So you would need to have some computer knowledge. We generally do have it in a classroom style setting in our computer labs in the office. And eventually, hopefully one day soon we can get back there. Um, but in the meantime, we can help with do-it-yourself uh, virtual tax preparation for tax year 2020 only. So this would only apply to the 2020 tax year. But if you do need back taxes filed, I am an advanced level preparer. As Sean mentioned, I have several years of tax preparation experience and I am available to assist as much as possible, especially for those, as Sophia mentioned earlier, the 2019 earned income credit uh, worksheet. It could be very um, parable that we could maximize or optimize on that credit due to you. Um, so if 2019 has not been filed, 2019 is also imperative on the economic impact payments that were issued. And so if you have not filed that year, we definitely wanna get that in the loop as soon as possible for those purposes. Um, as Sophia mentioned also earlier, just a little bit about the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we do have a requirement this year. So 2020, um, the federal government did take away the ACA but California has enforced it. So we do have to have all healthcare forms for the entire year. Your, it should be issued on forms 1095A, B or C, and it will also be on your W-2 form, but it is imperative that you have full year coverage for the year as state of California are imposing penalties for not doing so. So one major thing that has occurred this last year, especially with uh, many participants in our programs at Opportunity Junction, are relief supports and payments to participants that are going through um, job training programs or um, a placement programs, employment placement programs, and needing those assistance. And so it's very imperative that we understand how those payments or supports that were issued to us are um, applicable. Are they taxable? Are they not? And so uh, one form that could be issued to you is a 1099 miscellaneous. And it is generally a form for um, people who have self-employment income. This year that did change to a 1099 NEC. So there are two totally different forms now. So if you have a 1099 NEC, this is not for relief support payments. This is for non-employment compensation or contracted work that you completed for someone. Um, for the 1099 miscellaneous, I know for the rent reliefs or um, subsidies that were issued out, most of those payments were issued directly to those landlords to prevent participants from having to incur the taxable um, inquiries for a 1099 miscellaneous. If you did receive the 1099 miscellaneous, you want to make sure that you have filled out form W-9. So that W-9, when it is issued to you, you are requested to provide your social security number. If you've completed your rental assistance application and this form was not included in that process, then definitely this is not in that case. So um, if it's not required of you, you did not receive form 1099 miscellaneous, it is not a payment that is a taxable event, of, especially with the um, excuse me, Employment Development Department. We do have the, our government or state funded programs that participants do require supports to continue their education and skills training. Also, a little bit of information about the IRS. So it's, it's always that time of year where people want to um, call and say the IRS is coming to arrest you. Um, we're going to garnish your wages and so forth. This is absolutely not the case. The IRS will never call you directly without scheduling a time and a place. They will send you a letter to tell you to call them at a specific time. <laughs> so um, please make sure that you do not um, fall to the scammers out in the world today uh, because it is very important information that they are just trying to retrieve from you, and especially social security number. If it was the IRS, they already have that. Um, if it was, if it's a bank account number, 
that is not your bank, you should not be disclosing that information over the phone, um, especially with the IRS. They will never ask you to verify that information over the phone. Now, one thing you also wanna make sure is that you only file taxes for yourself this year. There are a lot of different scams and so forth going on out there. So do not um, just give your information away to anyone. Um, and then with the EDD scams that have arised within the 2020 pandemic year, definitely there's a lot of uh, information that was exposed that year. So making sure that you file only for yourself. Um, even if you are married filing joint, it is required that the spouse is present during the tax preparation and signature process. And um, any parents or grandparents, they definitely, depending on the dependency status of those relatives, we have some that have parents or grandparents in nursing homes where you do provide majority of their care. And so they would be con considered a dependent of yours where you do have rights, but please make sure you prearrange with us when signing up for your do-it-yourself online virtual services. And that is about it on my wrap. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any problems, please feel free to email me at uh, Janae at opportunityjunction.org. I'm gonna stop share here quickly, just give you a little uh, brief tour on our website on how you can sign up for our tax services. They are currently offered on Thursday evenings, 6 to 9 p.m. and on Saturday mornings from 10 to 1 p.m. You have myself and three other volunteers available during that time in breakout rooms, as well in a classroom setting with our moderator to answer any questions independently that you may have, we'll pull you into a, a breakout room. It's not working. <laughs> well, uh, while you're working on that, Janae, um, Sophia, we they were actually asking about federal disability, not state disability. Is that any different uh, in terms of taxes or is it the similar? Or Janae, if you know an answer to that, um, I was incorrect in it being state disability. Uh, you're uh, muted, Sophia. There you go. Yes. Um, I don't know, Janae, do you want to take that? I, you, you <laughs> want taxes longer than me. Um, I think the answer is no, but uh, disability is not taxable, but go ahead. So, yes, disability is, so Social Security disability is a little tricky. It all depends. If you have federal taxes withheld, generally below a specific amount, you are not required to file. But if you had taxes withheld, if you're not required to file, you should retrieve your refund with those taxes withheld because you had no tax liability for the year. So definitely um, even filing a not required to file, which I believe the IRS has a tool online to, that you can use for free for filers such as that, or coming to a site such as ours with FIDA and you can file and claim right to your refund. Because if taxes were withheld on monies that are not tax or not a taxable income, such as social security disability, you would want that refund. Thank you, Janae. Uh, and thank you both. Uh, that is, social security is a very interesting piece. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely can be a little tricky because with um, everything going on, we have not only Social Security, but retirement income that has been withdrawn for the year um, due to um, the COVID relief or payment. So if you had any of those deductions at 1099R retirement distribution may be applicable this year, where are some of your Social Security taxes? I mean, Social Security income could be taxable. And so, um, sorry, quick here, this is our website here. You'll just go to opportunityjunction.org forward slash free class, free dash classes forward slash taxes. And that will give you right here to this page. Here, you'll click to sign up. And um, one of the primary things here is our site is offering primarily to California residents or at this time, because of the virtual platform, we are being founded by a lot of other um, states and so forth through research. So we wanna make sure that we can help out as many people as we can and state of California is our pri primary focus right now. 
but all of the sites that are available or the classes that we have available, they will be able to use this drop down to select the date. And again, as soon as they complete this, they'll receive a email notification from myself with the Zoom link and how to access and what documents and so forth to bring to that session. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, really two incredible programs um, and two really great presentations. Uh, we don't have any other questions in the chat. Um, and uh, I guess I would just like to go over a few last things from our one degree uh, site. So I'm going to find where my PowerPoint went to uh, <laughs> and share it here. Um, just to go over a few last pieces here and then we will um, adjourn our webinar. Can you all see the support? Okay, awesome, thank you. Uh, so One Degree also has uh, live chat support. Uh, just in, if you're looking for other tax prep services in your area, uh, we are available on live chat Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and intermittently through the afternoons we are available. Um, we are not available on holidays. If you're using your mobile browser, just want to say there is a way for you to still access live chat. Um, and this is true for other sites that have uh, live chat as well. If you're not seeing it on your mobile browser, if you go to the uh, little three dots that are here in the corner of your mobile browser, you will get this little drop down menu and you want to click on desktop site. And that'll switch it from being a, a mobile uh, usage to being a um, uh, actual desktop screen and then the live chat will appear. We also have a whole bunch of frequently asked question um, answers for you uh, on our webpage. You can also access them from the mobile browser as well. If you go to help.onedegree.org um, and you can also email us at help at onedegree.org as well if you have further questions. We also have a lot of new, we are like breaking out into the YouTube scene these days um, because we are not able to be live in person with you. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of uh, training videos on how to use One Degree to find community resources, uh, how to use our Common App tool to apply for CalFresh or Medi-Cal. Uh, and of course, you can see our past webinars, today's webinar, um, as well as um, our past webinar on COVID-19 resources and our past webinar on using our Common App tool. Uh, look forward to us having another webinar in a, a couple of months. Topic yet to be determined, but we will see what, what we come up with in that uh, time. So I'm going to stop sharing here. It looks like we have one more question in our Padlet chat. So let me just check that real quick uh, here. Okay, it says, I go to Vida in Chinatown in Oakland. Are they open now? I don't get a return call when I call them and I haven't gotten a postcard. Um, so uh, the Vida in Chinatown in Oakland, I would go to uh, the website that Sophia was showing and um, that will give you the updated list of uh, places that are open during COVID-19. Uh, so I would just double check on there uh, and, and see if they're actually open uh, during this time. You can also look, I believe they're listed on the One Degree website as well. Uh, so they may have different hours or um, may have changed their phone numbers. So double check on both of those. Uh, I know a lot of folks aren't sending out postcards right now um, because they wanna protect people from uh, spreading COVID. Uh, uh, so they may not have mailed out postcards as part of their marketing. So definitely double check um, and see on the website if they're open. For Janae, when you sign up to do self-taxes through your organization, is it me, the individual, that will be using the uh, tax layer or the volunteers during the class slash breakout room session? Good question. Um, so it will be you doing the tax preparation on your end from a computer, mobile device. Um, we found it user friendly, both on a cell phone, an iPad, um, ju but just on a platform where you can be able to access both Zoom and tax layer at the same time. Awesome. Thank you. Um, just going to give it a minute here to see if there are any other further questions. 
Uh, we'll also be sending out the answers to these questions in the follow-up email. So if you registered for today's webinar, uh, you'll get a copy of the questions and answers from uh, the Padlet chat today. Uh, you can also see this uh, video again uh, if you'd like to watch it again on YouTube. Uh, it's available and next Thursday, same time, same channel, we will be back here uh, doing this webinar again in Spanish. Uh, and so uh, Cecilia will be leading us in that uh, with another one of our friends from United Way Bay Area, Earn It, Keep It, Save It, uh, which we're very excited about. And um, with that, I just want to give another big round of applause for our presenters today. We're so grateful uh, to have you join us. Uh, Cecilia and I are not knowledgeable in tax prep services, uh, so we're very happy to have you here um, for our very first um, uh, guest presentation in a webinar. So thank you again so much, and uh, we'll check you all out next time in our next live webinar. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much, Sean. Let me know if you need any more assistance. I'm here to help. Can't speak much Spanish, but I can be there to help. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you.